Our top headlines on tonight's newscast. Corporal Kwesi Bavagem is disgusted by the treatment he is receiving from City Hall. Donald Ramatar lambasts the government for allegedly misinterpreting the Constitution. 2 a.m. curfew to be relaxed on Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. An engorged construction worker gets three years for marijuana possession. We begin tonight's newscast with Lashana Gomes Cornelius, who spoke with the city police that reported the alleged sexual abuse of a minor. Corporal Kwesi Bafagem is disgusted that he has been placed on administrative leave. He said it is unfair that he is subject to the same fate as the alleged perpetrator. Corporal Kwesi Bevigans is the city police who reported the alleged sexual molestation to his superior. A 15-year-old child is reportedly the victim. Corporal Bevigans was at the time in the same office as the Lance Corporal, who allegedly committed a heinous act. Believing he was correct to report a matter to his superior, Bevigans is shocked with the way the city administration dealt with the issue. During an exclusive interview with News Update, Bevigans vehemently stressed that he reported the alleged act in accordance to what is prescribed by the law. The town clerk, Mr. Rice and King, added that I did not take action according to my dismissal letter, which I did take action. I did report him out to my superior and then forward report to the chief constable on the said morning. Right? And I also wished I had that he mentioned that I did not make a diary entry. Right? But I wish to see that the procedure, right, the said Lance Corp, which is the alleged accused at this time, he was the subordinate officer in charge of the said station at the time, and all properties come under his portfolio, along with the said juvenile who was in custody at the time. Uh, um, if, I, uh, if I be charged departmentally, it would be neglect of duty, failing to make a diary entry. But however, none of this was not, was not done, right? They're supposed to charge me departmentally, Right, and it's supposed to take the necessary course of action by the chief constable or any select committee, but the last stipulate, right, the same section, right. Um, but I also want to add that my dismissal, I see this as a form of punishment for speaking the truth, and I'm not going to condone such an act. And nobody, children, unlike my children also, because I have six children of my own, and I teach people cheering for a living also. Additionally, Bevigans believes that the Ministry of Communities, along with the Labor Department, has reasoned extensively with the office of the town clerk. This has caused the city administration to reverse its decision to fire him. However, he also believes it is immoral to now be placed on administrative leave, like the accused in the matter. Yeah, well, in this stand, um, what I do know, right, if I've been reinstated, right, and it also mentioned in last week, Wednesday, Kaichu News, a column, that both parties will be, myself and the alleged accused, will be reinstated and be sent on administrative leave, which also administrative leave does not go for me, who is the report and the witness. Administrative leave and somebody has been sent, according to my knowledge, right, is when you commit an act or an allegation has been labeled upon you, of a, upon you as a person then you should be sent an administrative leave. In this context, I see this as blatant again, and see this as wrong. And in the first place, I was wrongfully dismissed. Why must I be punished so many times for this is not my wrongdoing? And in this whole, whole scenario of, of investigation, I haven't heard the mayor or the town clerk make reference of the accused name at all or anything has been mentioned about him. It's merely me and the chief constable. Right? But I'm just a report and a witness, and I have all right to report such a con such an incident and conduct against people, children. Corporal Bevigans, who has worked several years as a police officer and as a police prosecutor, said it is absolutely necessary for persons to speak out against sexual abuse. Bevigans resounded if placed in a similar situation, he will do the same. He underscored as a parent and a member of society, it is his responsibility to protect children. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius.
Former President Donald Ramatar has once again lambasted the government. This time, he claims the constitution is being misinterpreted. Ramatar made this statement as the Minister of State continues to deliver decisions made by cabinet, despite he's not the cabinet secretary. Here are the details from Sandy Ramatar. Former President Donald Ramutar has criticized the Granger government for the role the cabinet secretary is playing. The cabinet secretary, Edward Persico, is not conveying the decisions made at cabinet to the media. Instead, the Minister of State, Joseph Harmon, continues to do the same. However, Ramutar said the cabinet briefing is a small matter. The bigger issue, according to the former president, is the manner in which the Granger-led administration treats the constitution. While, this is, while the problem you ask me is a, it's, it's an important issue, um, to me it is, it, it is way down the ladder as far as importance is concerned and the violation of the constitution of our country. Edward Persico was appointed as secretary to the cabinet last year, but his appointment was only recently made public. The opposition and government have over time had their own interpretation of the constitution. One of the most recent ones is the interpretation of Article 161-2. This article paves the way for the selection of a chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission. The differences in the interpretation of the Constitution have made the opposition sour with the selection of retired Justice James Patterson as a new GCOM chairman. This has caused the opposition to file an injunction in the High Court seeking to nullify the appointment of Patterson. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The Alliance for Change National Executive Committee expresses deep concern for workers in the sugar industry who are likely to be displaced. The committee is calling on the government to take decisive decisions with regard to their welfare. The party is also calling for workers to receive severance pay, to be leased lands, to have access to small loans and markets for agro-processing. Additionally, the party calls on the government to establish the Integrity Commission as a matter of urgent national priority. After many appeals from members of the business community, the Public Security Minister will be relaxing the 2 a.m. curfew. It will not be relaxed for the entire Christmas season, but only for two days, the Minister told one of our reporters, Nikhil Jondo. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan has declared that he will not relax the 2 a.m. curfew for the duration of the Christmas season. However, for December 25 and December 31, the 2 a.m. curfew would be relaxed. Minister Ramjitan said he has been receiving requests from the business community to have it relaxed. I have indicated um, no, no to. Because a lot of everybody wants to just to jump up, jump up all the time. And the, 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 the liquor, plenty fighting, fighting even with, 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 with army men and all kind of set of people, the drunk and all kind of thing. The public security minister noted that Many young people are engaged in heavy drinking, which may lead to other social ills. He believes that, by retaining the 2 a.m. curfew, it hampered the entertainment industry. Ramjitan explained that the local faith-based organizations have made several complaints that those Jamaican artists coming to Guyana have a negative impact on youths. Yeah, but that is one way of stopped halting it, by not extending their time. But that's the law. That is the law that I want to be abided by. But everybody, you know, wants to shift the law back to four or five o'clock in the morning and get one set of people lying down there drunk. But one set of people every weekend now, they're bringing in this body from Jamaica, the body from Dominica for sing song and so on, and they want to go till five o'clock in the morning. In the meantime, several businessmen have expressed concern that ranks of the Ghana police force are not closing certain bars at 2 a.m., their concerns were raised with Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarine. I feel uh, somewhat there's a double standard. Uh, so that's my question if there is it based on the police are acting based on the noise nuisance or you're actually going to every single bar and shutting them down. Because some of the members are saying that they're being shut down and other bars are not being shut down that may have been just slightly outside of Georgetown or um, in certain five years. The acting top cop had noted that most of the bars and night spots are closed at the prescribed time. He pointed out that it is impracticable for ranks to pop up at every bar and night spot to remind owners that they have to close their doors. And for example, if you have 10 places of public entertainment, you can't start at 2 o'clock making the rounds if you get me. Because even though people know 
that is a two way. You're gonna people around you go, okay, the police haven't come, you haven't seen anything, whatever, no, at least complain, oh, let's continue. No. Start at 12.30, so you know, providing your mobile, that within half of an hour or five minutes, everyone is alerted that, hey, this is the position, 2 a.m. You're not pull up at 2 a.m. and tell somebody to shut down at 2. It's not happening like that. The curfew was fully implemented in 2015 by Minister Ramchatan. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street, North Cummingsburg, for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. I would like to get a couch for my mom and a television for my dad because I like the one that is at courts. My father want a bed and my mother want a TV because it's Saturday. Is this a wrap Santa? This is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer, and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breast to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like Anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear. Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Annie Bina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. So much Windex for clean windows, all them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home it. Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. You're still with News Update. Welcome back. President David Granger reiterates that his government is not only willing but obligated to ensure the health and education needs of all children in Guyana are met. This, the president stated at an inaugural Children's Forum hosted by the Ministry of Social Protection in collaboration with the Ministry of Education.
Some of the issues raised by many of the students that participated in the forum were suicide, inadequate learning elements at schools, pollution, non-supportive parenting, and absenteeism, with the prime focus being that of child sexual abuse. President David Granger, among other government ministers, were all at the inaugural event, which not only highlighted the debilitating issues in communities all across Guyana, but showcased the variety of creative talents of many of the nation's students. President Granger thrilled at what he saw, briefly related on his administration's willingness and obligation to the safety, health, and educational needs of all children in Guyana. The president lauded the ministries of social protection and education on their combined effort in making the event a reality. But this is good. Um, you have to take over this country 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And we are very happy that you are so articulate. Um, some of the criticisms are painful, but it means that the adults here will take note and try to make things better for you. Um, we have a motto in our administration, every child in school, ECIS. We want to make sure the children get the best possible preparation. And uh, we are very happy to hear these voices. I hope that uh, in future years, we will not only have these forums, but they will be in different parts of the country, just as children have come from all different regions. We want to go to the region so that we can hear what's happening in Borimo Maini, what's happening in Dunuri, what's happening in Masuri Kuruni, and all of the regions. So I'd like to congratulate the ministries, but most of all, I'd like to thank the children for the excellent performances so far. Plans to make the event an annual one is still to be later determined, as noted by the president himself. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. It is now 19 days since the vendors of Border Street were removed to facilitate the reconstruction of the road, however work is yet to begin. This has angered the president of the Guyana Market Vendors Union, Ian Andrews, who is calling for Tom Clark Royston King to be sacked. Here is more from Yanis Abrams. President of the Ghana Market Vendors Union, Eon Andrews, like the former Deputy Mayor Sharon Duncan, is calling for the Tom Clark Roy sinking to be fired. Andrews, during an exclusive interview, re-emphasized the news update that the council's chief administrator is not to be trusted. A reflection of this, Andrews mentioned, is a stalled Border Street reconstruction project. We are not too sure whether these desires to get things done like the, what you call the Parliament View Mall and all the different projects all end in disaster, confusion, displacement, and people being aggrieved. So when this thought about paving the border street came about, it was thought, our members thought that it might be in, the, in their best interest to let the union through me and my executives and their representative to have discourse about their concerns and to have formal agreements whereby we know that this fellow cannot renege on anything or there must be sane and proper arrangements as it relates to that. The president of the union alleged that he made contact with the Ministry of Public Infrastructure on the council's project. He claimed to have been told that it will only take three days for businesses through the street to recommence. There's always an advisory when these kind of things occur in these kind of areas that are so busy, main carriageway. Infrastructure would normally put on an advisory that the road will be closed in the paper between such and such a time. I have not seen that, so when these things occur, I do not know if what he's saying is true. Because I've hardly heard him speak anything through at all. Vendors of the Border Street were asked to sign a document along with the Tom Clark Royston King agreeing to vacate the area to allow the street to be recapped. King said the project which the council is spearheading in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Infrastructure will take up to three weeks to complete. It is now 19 days since the vendors were asked to vacate the area, yet no work has commenced. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. 
The local aviation industry has developed rapidly during the past 45 years. Looking back at those years, Captain Gerald Gavias says there are still better days ahead. Find out more in this Nickel John Doe report. Captain Gerald Gravaya, during an exclusive interview with News Update, said the local aviation sector has recorded 4 to 5 deaths within the last 4 to 5 years. He noted that 19 fatal accidents occurred during the same period. What is interesting is that in the last 15 years, so we took those 4 to 5 years and we divided it into 3 15 year tranches. So we went from 1970 to 1985, 1986 to 2001, and 2002 to 2017. And what we found is that in the last 15 years, going back up to 2002, that aviation safety in Guyana, we were at the highest level of safety in the history of Guyana. The 30 years before that, from 2001 back to 1970, we had 14 accidents with 37 deaths as against five accidents with eight deaths. Captain Govaya said within the last 15 years, Aviation accidents and deaths have been reduced significantly. He noted that during those years, while safety was paramount, the economic explosion in the industry began to rise. We moved from 20 planes to 100 planes. We moved from moving maybe 500,000 passengers to moving in this last maybe 3 million, 4 million passengers. So we have had an enormous increase in aviation activity. And we've had a, a, a corresponding dramatic decrease in accidents and, and fatal accidents and, 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 and deaths. The captain and chief executive officer of Rima Airways boasts that recently only one fatality the company suffered in 25 years. He believes that more work needs to be done by the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority despite the authority has been playing an important role in the development of the industry. I believe it needs to be faster. I think more work needs to be done, not only in terms of coming down in a big stick and trying, to, and trying to catch the operators and see if they're making a mistake, but in terms of what they tangibly have to do to help contribute to safety, better air traffic control services, better weather reporting systems, better search and rescue systems, better runway management systems, and so on. So aviation safety in Guyana, even with all of those challenges and shortcomings, in the last 15 years, we have seen a remarkable increase in safety in Ghana, and it's getting better every day. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Coming up, law enforcement officers receive financial investigation training and only six radio licenses granted by GNBA. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know, know the, the secret. secret. <laughs> 
Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals live healthier cook with canola and vegetable oil from Costco and Sam's Club America's largest wholesale distributors same nutrition value as Wesson oil get a case of six bottles of six pint canola oil for only nine thousand dollars members mark olive oil also available imported and distributed by Isaac investments available in all DSL branches and leading supermarkets countrywide Isaac Investments, located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. A 15-day training workshop for law enforcement officers on assets recovery and financial investigations kick-started this morning. The training sessions are being conducted by the Caribbean Institute of Forensic Accounting. Nicole John with the details. Participating agencies are the Ministry of Finance, the Guyana Revenue Authority, the Bank of Guyana, the Financial Intelligence Unit, the Special Organized Crime Unit, and the Customs Anti-Narcotic Unit. Head of the Special Organized Crime Unit, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Sidney James, said, he has had similar training prior to his appointment at the unit. He noted that further training was provided to himself and other personnel of SOKU. The Assistant Commissioner urged the participants to work with each other in investigations when the training is completed. You form liaisons because you will see, maybe not during the course, but thereafter that you really require uh, collaboration among agencies in Guyana for any financial investigation to be success. Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Godfrey Stacia, noted that it requires years of training to be a forensic accountant. However, he urged the participants to make use of the training, given that it will be done in three weeks. He pointed out that the audits which were carried out in recent times were not forensically done. He posited that those investigations were lacking in certain areas. What Mr. Gray is trying to do here and Saru is trying to do here is to ensure that you are equipped with the skills which would allow you to do a proper forensic investigation. Director of SARA, Dr. Clive Thomas, also reminded the participants that the training being provided is not to be taken for granted. This is not a place where you come in and drift out and in as if you're at a conference. You're here to undergo systematic training. And for that, you have to be diligent, attentive, and certainly you have to be punctual and to attend here at, for every single session. Dr. Thomas announced that following the completion of the training in mid-December, SARA will be moving into its new office located at Lot 55 Main and New Market Streets. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The mother of 13-year-old Aaron Roberts, who went missing on November 11, is thanking the heavens for her son's safe return. Roxanne Benjamin of South Sophia, Georgetown, anxiously related the news update that her son Aaron had returned home safe and sound. Lashana gomez Cornelius followed this report. According to Roxanne Benjamin, when she returned home from work on Monday, November 20, she was extremely relieved to find her son Aaron in the company of his father, her estranged husband, standing at her gateway. The 11th this morning, I was seeing him. I don't know for sure where he was, but he was with the, he came with the father this morning. All I could say, when I came from work this morning, about 11 something to 12, I saw him with the father and a bigger brother talking outside of the yard. He and the father had a little talking, and I don't know. So when I said, give him his bag, let him go with his father, he's going to go down to the station and talk to the police officer. He refused to go with the father. While pleased at her son's safe return, Benjamin, who shares several children with Aaron's father, is concerned with the manner in which the police have dealt with the entire situation since his initial disappearance from home on November 11. 
Benjamin believes that the police should have been more thorough with their investigation since she had reported to them that the last person to see and hear from her son was his father. The police should have been involved more and the father should have been answering questions. Child is about and why you had kept the child or conceal him if you had concealed the child from his parents. Moving forward, Benjamin indicated while as a single mother her responsibilities to her children takes priority, at times it is not easy. Benjamin thanks everyone who may have played a role in encouraging her son to return home. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Chairman of the Guyana National Broadcasting Authority, Leslie Sobers, says only six entities have been granted radio licenses. The chairman also notes that the authority will not be granting television licenses until it is finished with those for radio. Yanis Abrams with the details. Chairman of the Guyana National Broadcasting Authority, Leslie Sobers, during a telephone interview with News Update, said that six radio licenses were approved by the GNBA. So I stated the GNB is only focusing on radio broadcasters presently. The chairman was unable to mention the amount of persons that had three applied for broadcasting licenses. When asked to identify those entities that have been granted their licenses, this was Sober's response. I will not identify entities. You would not? That does not that happen to the paper. That's a decision that I have made. For example, the persons who have been licensed for the first time ever um, which the board approved. Um, I have not communicated with them to tell them that they have been approved for licensing. And so it would be improper for them to hear it through the media. I have to tell them that officially first. On July 27, the Broadcast Amendment Bill 2017 was laid in the National Assembly and subsequently passed by the government one seat majority. The government was brought under scrutiny by the opposition party and broadcasters for the alleged harsh clauses in the bill. Since two media entities, Freedom Radio and NBC Channel 42, have filed separate cases in the High Court seeking to annul the bill. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news ahead. Stay tuned. It's November already, and soon it will be Christmas. So we at John Lewis Styles want to give you something to look forward to. We're giving away one RCA tablet every week in November and one every day in December. You heard right, one tablet every week in November and one every day in December. Shop for clothing, footwear, watches, fragrances, handbags, and even luggage. Each purchase gives you a chance to win, plus lots more surprises to come. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket a day could make you rich today. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. 
You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. Preliminary works are still ongoing at the Kitty Sea Wall as the government has embarked on a massive $229 million roundabout. Works are moving fast the pace following the completion of the first phase at the Kitty Sea Wall sinkhole. The southern half between Kaifes Avenue and Basinjan Road is presently experiencing underground works. This phase, which already saw the laying of culverts and pipes, is now seeing the construction of steel structures beneath the ground. In addition to this, the Kitty Public Road has been barred from traffic to facilitate the ongoing maintenance works. Following that aspect, the superstructure will be erected, which will see the paving and asphalting of the affected spaces. After this process is completed, the construction of the roundabout will commence. The $229 million project will allow for the smooth road travel in one direction. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The question still lingers in the public, what did the top brass of City Hall went to China for? Former Councillor Ian Andrews is urging the Council to reveal the finance of the trip since City Hall is purportedly cash-strapped. Yanis Abrams followed this report. The Mayor of Georgetown, Patricia Chairs Green, Tom Clark Royston King and other members of the City Council recently returned from a trip to China. The purpose of that trip is still unknown. Former Councillor Ian Andrews is questioning how the administrative personnel are looking at the city's concerns. Andrews stated that the council is constantly complaining about being cash strapped, yet they are quote unquote touring the world. I'm surprised now that you know people just traveling. Your deputy mayor don't know. People don't know what you're going for. All you're saying is that people pay for it so you could travel. So my understanding or uh, uh, the impression given to me is that people are using their position to see places around the world. They don't know how long they're going to be there so they got to travel. All the dreams they would have had are being realized now with these travels. It has brought nothing to the city, it has brought nothing to this country. So I don't know the reason for these travels, only they know. Many efforts to contact the mayor, the town clerk, and the public relations officer to ascertain the purpose of the trip proved futile. Meanwhile, the past councillor stated, since speculations have risen on the trip, none of the five persons purported to have been on the trip came forward to give clarity. Their actions would have affected person from the perspective of you're going to China, your staff is not paid, the mayor, which is the chief, the political head, the town clerk, which is the administrative head. You got the, the chairman of the finance committee as the finance committee head. You got the engineer went. You don't know what he went for, but that's the building and you know the city works head and some other councillor. I don't know what they went for, but as is, nothing happened. The team left for China in early November. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. With the funding from Unilever, three schools will each receive a $70,000 canteen and wash lobby makeover as part of a promotion of hand washing across schools. Sandy Ramatar with the details. This follows the promotion of Unilever hand washing across 200 primary schools in Guyana. The schools were edified on the safety of hand washing using the branded Unilever Lifebuoy soap at their institutions. Marketing Development Manager Jackie Dorochet said three schools were selected from each county to have a makeover. Lifebuoy is all about germ prevention. Every single year, thousands of children all over the world die from preventable diseases that could be solved by just mere, merely washing your hands. So basically every year, live boy go to school to explain to them how is it that washing your hands the right way can save lives. South Rheinfeld from Demerara, Shitanka from Barbies, and Queenstown Primary from Essequibo each came out as winners and will receive a $70,000 makeover. Following inspection of the school, the canteen, wash lobby, among other centers will be given a makeover. 
The schools were selected based on an art competition depicting the prevention of germs by washing hands. Unilever has annually been promoting the hygienic use of hand washing through schools across the country. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for Court Roundup as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. Curtains, curtains, more curtains, a decor and gift gallery. Pick your curtains for your living room, kitchen, bedroom, or just add some colors to the curtains you already have to give that Christmassy look. Shop your Christmas curtains today from Decor and Gift Gallery. Do you have a business idea and don't know where to start? Do you have a small business that has been stagnated and not growing? iPad can provide finance for as much as $20 million for you to acquire equipment, tools, machinery, and stocks to start or expand your business. iPad can also provide mentoring and training for you to improve your business skills, marketing, and record keeping. iPad improving livelihoods. Get going, keep growing with iPad. Try the new basil seed drink, enriched with basil seeds, which is proven to be good in the fight against colds, digestion, stress, weight loss, skin infections, and more. Basil seed drink, imported and distributed by Airwahab Trading and available nationwide. At Gaffour's, we're now offering etched design mirrors and glasses. Our state-of-the-art machinery can engrave any design from 12 inches by 12 inches to 24 inches by 48 inches. And this product is perfect for memento and memorial plaques, branding or sponsorship, or as a gift item to show that someone how special he or she is. You can have your design mirrors dressed with metallic finished frames or polished edges for a more modern look. Come into any one of our branches to choose from our range of designs or bring your own design and have your customized mirrors made within seven working days. Gaffour's, the name you can trust. what went down at the Georgetown Magistrates Courts. Four alleged gang members were today remanded to prison by City Magistrate Judy Latchman on a spate of robbery charges. Carl Hillman, Christoph Watts, Leon Gittens, and Quasi McCoy were jointly charged for robbing Asif Mohammed of a quantity of cash, electronics, and personal items valued $2.2 million while making use of personal violence. They all denied the charge. Hilliman, Gittens, and McCoy were also jointly charged for being armed with an ice pick on July 30 at America and London Streets at Georgetown and robbing Ryan Mohabir of a phone, a wallet, and a cash, totaling $26,000. The trio denied this charge. It is further alleged that the trio on July 25 at America and London Streets robbed Carl Chung of a cell phone, foreign and local currencies, totaling $115,200. They again denied the charge. Hilliman and Gittins were separately charged for the offense which alleged that on October 28, at Kroll Street, they robbed Ryanta Subasi of an iPhone and other items, totaling $272,000. They pleaded not guilty. Hilliman was further charged for robbing Danny Ram Ram Pandis of an iPhone, a wallet, and other items, 
totaling $166,000. Additionally, he was charged with robbing Suraj Gucharan of a phone and other items worth $163,000 on September 24 at Sheriff Street. He pleaded not guilty to both charges. Magistrate Latchman remanded the men until December 4 after police prosecutor Sean Gonzalez objected to pretrial liberty on the ground of the seriousness of all the charges. Meanwhile, City Magistrate Judy Latchman on Monday sentenced a 25-year-old construction worker to three years in jail for drug possession. Satifa Joseph pleaded guilty to the charge which read that, on November 16 at America Street, he had 21 grams of cannabis in his possession. According to reports, on the day in question, police and foot patrol stopped and searched Joseph while he was at America Street, Georgetown. The drug was reportedly found in Joseph's front pants pocket. The magistrate imposed the minimum three years on Joseph for the drug, along with a fine of $30,000. Finally, a 20-year-old mechanic was on Monday charged and released on $150,000 bail by Magistrate Judy Latchman for allegedly stealing a motorbike. Mohammed Eden denied that, between August 6, 2017 and August 7, 2017, at La Penitence Public Road, he stole a motorbike valued $185,000, property of Samuel, Scotland. Eden's attorney told the court that someone called Carl had taken the bike to his client to repair and he was unaware that it was stolen. However, according to the police's facts read to the court by Prosecutor Sean Gonzalez, the victim saw the defendant riding around with his stolen cycle and called the police. Gonzalez further told the court that when Eden was arrested by police, he confessed that he bought the stolen cycle and was repairing it. Police prosecutor Sean Gonzalez made no objection to bail. The magistrate released Eden on $150,000 bail and adjourned the matter until December 4. Godfrey Brooms, MTV, News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 748. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge schedule. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Corporal Kwesi Bafengems disgusted by the treatment he's receiving from City Hall. Donald Ramatar lambasts the government for allegedly misinterpreting the Constitution. 2 a.m. curfew to be relaxed on Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. An court construction worker gets three years for marijuana possession. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Tuesday, November 21. On behalf of our news team, I'm Ashley Scott and thanking you for watching. Good night.